What's the haps? I'm Maroka, and today I'm going to be finding out what's new in Rosh Fusion. This is a game I took a look at back in May on this channel, and I rather liked it. So the developers, Amalware, recently approached me and said, would I like to take another look at it? And yes, yes I would. I rather liked it back in May, so I would like to see what's new in this game. So. The version I looked at before was z version 0.5.1, which can be downloaded from their website uh, under the open beta section. This is available as a part of the closed beta, which you can sign up for. So this is version 0.14, as you can see in the corner, and obviously the press preview at the moment, but I imagine they'll be opening that up to people at some point in the future. At any rate, I'm going to go through and show you what's new in it. So, take a look at the options menu, see what's changed there first, because it's obviously an important factor. Uh, the controls, the rebinds were a little bit odd. For some reason, they co I couldn't rebind a controller particularly well right off the bat. However, I did email the devs and they shot, shot a response back within about five minutes that fixed it really, really easily. So, uh, kudos to them for that, but I guess if they're going to make that available to the public in any way, shape or form, that's perhaps an issue that needs resolving. Uh, we have added primary fire modes, so I will get into this in the gameplay because I probably better demonstrated actually in game. But we have a normal fire mode. We've got inverted fire, which means you stop firing when you pull the trigger and otherwise continue firing, which is a little bit odd and in a certain way makes a kind of sense because with these kind of games you do pretty much fire most of the time. You know, you just a constant stream of bullets. There's very rarely you will actually stop firing those bullets or have any have any reason to stop firing those bullets. So invert just means you don't need to shoot. It automatically shoots for you most of the time. There is one specialist case that I will go into once we actually get into the game. And there's also a toggle mode, which I'm not entirely convinced that's... Um, I'm, not, I'm really not sure about that one. I guess some people must have wanted it for them to have added it. Uh, audio is much the same as it always was. We've got music and effects on separate sliders. Video, they have added a V-Sync and a frame rate cap to it if you wanted to cap it. It's a vertical scrolling shooter. I really don't think there's much need for it, I guess. It's nice to have, but I have never seen any screen tearing whatsoever. And mostly because it's vertical scrolling. I mean, V-Sync tends to be required in games where, well, basically when there's a lot of horizontal movement on the screen, because that can then lead to screen tearing that is fixed by using V-Sync. And in this instance, well, no, there's none of that. Everything, everything's moving up. All the background, well, the background's moving down. I'm flying up for the most part. You move from side to side and the enemies move from side to side sometimes, but not nearly enough to make it make any kind of issue out of it. I don't know, just a little bit strange. And then we've, we've also got uh, where this used to have something about submitting a, anonymous data to so that they could improve the game. They've removed that, so whether that means they automatically do it when you have no say in it, or whether, or whether they've stopped doing that or not, I don't know. However, it's now been replaced with reset high scores, so if you decide you want to wipe your leaderboard, that's fine too. I will save that and head on out. Let's head on into the game, let's have a look at what we've got. We have new ships, we have new things to play with. So this is the standard one we had before, this is just shoot bullets, things die. The same as every other ship from every other shooter ever. There's a long stream of bullets. Uh, enemies will spawn and we will kill them. So, a quick recap, the enemies will continue spawning, they are randomized, it's a, got sort of roguelike elements in this, so the enemies will appear randomly. Uh, and we'll kill them, and then when we each enemy we kill fills up this green meter at the top. When the green meter is full, uh, then we we get one major upgrade, and we can move on to the next wave. Uh, this is going well. There's a lot of enemies I can't kill very effectively here, and that thing's pretty powerful. We do have a shield, which means I can take a few minor hits, but not a whole lot. Once that meter's full, the enemies will stop spawning. So nuts! I can't believe I did. I died on the first wave. Those red things are really difficult to shoot if you don't have an effective weapon to get because they just sort of fly behind you a lot. So we've got some new upgrades. Freaking laser is a new thing and we've got a repulse field which pushes enemies away from you if they get near you. Freaking laser is kind of a cool one. I will take that. It's on a very short cooldown and it's... well it does this. It does exactly what you'd expect it to. There are then also these green upgrades which can upgrade various bits of your ship. In this case it's going to upgrade the duration of the laser beam when I fire it. So it's going to fire a little bit longer this time, and a little bit longer again. Now the multiplier is upgraded by 
killing multiple enemies in one go. Basically, it's tied to your combos. If you kill lots of enemies in one shot, I'll let these guys fly past, why not? Uh, yeah. If, if you kill a bunch of guys in one shot, it will up upgrade your multiplier. You do need to kill enough to get a combo out of it, though. If you, kill three or four, if you kill three or four, it doesn't do anything. I think you need to kill about five enemies in a row for it to count as a combo, at which point you'll then get uh, the extra multiplier. You get nuts. This is not going well for me. And they're all rookie mistakes as well I'm making. Uh, the the uh, multiplier upgrades by 0.1 per combo, per number of the combo, I guess. So if I do that, no, it's not going to kill anyone. I oh, that's a lot of enemies all appearing in one go. This is in, this might not end too well for me. I can see this going badly. Or right, I can kill that. The shield is really nice for noobs like me. It does mean you don't need to dodge everything in existence because you can you can take a few hits and it won't kill you. Extra damage, always appreciated. The green enemies are kind of cool, because if you don't want to fight them, they'll fly away. But, obviously, you do need to fill up the meter at the top, so if you don't kill everything... Let's just do that, that'll work. If you don't kill everything, you'll just keep getting enemies until you have filled the meter. Also, the, if you die, the multiplier obviously decreases slightly, and that sort of then regrows back to where it was. Also, you've got the cooldowns. Normally, you could just sort of chill on these screens and obviously your multiplier would then reset and your cooldowns would reset. Fortunately, they have changed it so that your multiplier and cooldowns all just reset to whatever they were. Cooldowns on the weapons back to zero and the multiplier back to whatever it's supposed to be at the end of these phases because, you know, it was just kind of, it was just kind of cheesing the system a bit. So it's just kind of done away with that. It's like, look, if you're gonna do that, we're just gonna let you have it. So none of these are terribly exciting. Pew is something we had before. It's reasonably powerful. I do like it as a weapon, uh, but it's nothing it's nothing new. It's nothing you haven't seen before in this game. I will try and get to one of the bosses. I'm not necessarily going to manage it because obviously the randomization and whatnot doesn't. Uh, damn it! Does lead to. It does lead to sometimes you get runs that aren't quite as effective as others, and other times you'll get all the upgrades you want in the world, and it's just fantastic. So, did I get, didn't get any upgrades out of that? I guess I didn't. These guys are best taken care of with a laser, I find. There we go, there's an upgrade, some damage. That's cool. This guy's gonna fly around and try and shoot me with its laser. I'm not going to have that. We should be getting somewhere close to a boss now, I hope. Well, the black hole is probably one of the most powerful weapons in the, in the game, and uh, it's got a long cooldown, though. I'm probably going to take the wasps. Wasps are kind of nice, just add, just for a bit more firepower for me. So they they shoot little missiles out the side that then fly towards the enemies and damn it, and kill them. I will know. You probably notice my ship drifting around there a bit. I do think under the if we go back into the options, I would love to see some gamepad sensitivity controls there. I can't adjust the gamepad sensitivity, and my controller does need the sensitivity dropping quite a lot with games. Every time I try and use my gamepad, I kind of end up, my character tends to wander around of their own volition. It's like, can I turn the sensitivity down a bit, please? Just so that I can actually control my own character. Anyway, let's try the second ship. This one has explosive missile launchers. It fires much sh much slower shots than the other one. It only fires one at a time. However, the shots are more powerful and they have an AoE. So I do feel like this is a bit more of an advanced ship, as it were. It's perhaps uh, people are a bit more... A bit, bit better at games than I. Oh, three upgrades in one? Yeah, I'll take those. Cool. The upgrades seem to be a little bit sporadic, I'll be honest. Sometimes, sometimes enemies will drop, like, like like that one, it'll drop like three, and other times you won't get any upgrades for ages. Okay, fine, fly off, see if I care. <laughs> so each of the ships has its own unique weapon, and by extension their own unique upgrades, so there will be some upgrades that I can now pick up with this ship that I can't get with the standard ship, and indeed with the third ship as well, which we'll get to in a moment. The third ship, I think, is the one that will take uh, the best advantage of the unique contro uh, controls, the inverted controls and the toggleable controls. Particularly the inverted, the toggle I can't make head nor tail of. This one has split missiles, so I can now fire three missiles at once, which is kind of useful. Hopefully not gonna get I uh, hopefully not gonna get too many of these blue guys with this weapon, because they're kind of nasty. Um I not sure if there's kind of patterns to the enemies. I do feel like if you get one enemy, you do seem to get the same enemies will appear a lot. I may get a lot more of these blue guys in this in this wave. Yeah, here they come. And this weapon is maybe not the best suited to dealing with them. I could use a, well, a freaking laser would do it. Yeah, look at them now, they're all arriving. 
which means there's going to be an endless barrage of bullets from these guys, and I'm not really don't have quite the firepower to take the best care of them all. However, we are at the end of the wave. If I can kill them, we can move on to something else, which would be nice. I was got to keep an eye on that green meter just to know how well you're doing. Some enemies will fill it up a lot more than others. Kind of a cool, interesting mechanic, just to keep things flowing. Just so you do need to kill enemies to move on, but you're not going to be necessarily forced to. Homing missiles, yes, I'll take those. They're kind of cool. So I'm now going to get triple missiles that home in. I don't even need to particularly aim it at this point. They're just going to do ridiculous amounts of damage. Of course, it does take a second for them to split, so if I fire at point-blank range, it's actually going to do less damage than it would otherwise. I probably don't need to put too much thought into this now. I just need to dodge the bullets more so than anything else. Which is a nice way to have to play the game, actually. I'm kind of cool with this. I can dig it. I can totally dig this. The Lazy Man's Bullet Hell Shooter. These are not hitting my targets. They've got a, they do have a bit of a turning circle, I'll be honest. So You can't always just sit and dodge everything, I guess. But that's working out alright for me. Extra damage, extra fire rate. Both of these are upgrades I'm okay with. Stay back here and dodge their lasers. Damn it, why would I do that? I do make a lot of rookie mistakes with this damn thing. I am not very good at these. I, I, I love shoot 'em ups, but I am not especially good at them. I am I'm pretty bad at the old shoot 'em ups. Don't mean I can't enjoy them though. Because I think I, th I do feel like they've upped the difficulty a lot with this. I don't know whether it's just the new enemies are particularly challenging or what, but. Uh, just, just going by the scoreboards alone, i getting much lower scores than I ever did in the past because it still remembers all my old scores. Previously I was quite easily capable of getting to six figure scores and now I'm really struggling. I've done it like twice, I've only beaten the first boss like once and yeah I just, I just really struggle to get even half as far as I used to be able to do in the old build of this game. So I feel like unless I got really bad at shoot 'em ups in the last few months which is, is possible, I'm, you know, I never profess to be especially good at games. Damn it! Gah. Uh, well, let's take a look at those scoreboards, yeah, unless I've got really bad at them in the last few games, um, I'm just not as good as I used to be, or it's, it's a lot harder. So, previously, most of those scores, most of the ones over, certainly the ones over 200,000 are the old scores, I think, what have I managed there? I managed 121,000 and 139,000, I think, are the only two scores in the six-figure range that I managed in this build of the game. And, as you can see, look, 777,000 with a 24 multiplier. That's alright, that's a good score. I ain't got anywhere close to that in this new build of the game, not remotely. Let's take a look at the third ship. So this one is, basically, this one shoots a powerful laser followed by a long stream of short lasers. When you stop firing, you, you it's got this big glowy orb that then charges up the laser. I like this ship. I'm on, I'll be honest, it, again, this one feels almost like it's perhaps intended to be like a hard hard mode ship, even more so than the missiles, perhaps. But I, I'll be honest, I'm enjoying it. It's got some cool stuff going on. I will show you the options for the, contro uh, the inverted controls, because I think this is what it's intended for. Basically, basically, it's going to continue firing all the time, and then when I hold the trigger down, it's going to charge the shot up. So basically, it kind of almost makes a strange kind of sense when you do it this way. So basically, you hold the trigger to charge the shot, and then let go to fire off your charge shot. The longer you hold it down, the better it's going to be. I'll take an upgrade, and then. But I don't know. I've got I've got used to playing it uninverted, to be honest. So I will switch back. But I can see how that would work. I can see what that's for. But no, I, I, I like to just not fire and charge at my shots. In fact, in a lot of playthroughs, I will just use the charge shots. The Rainbow of Doom is a new upgrade. So that's one of the new things. So anything that... F <laughs> it's a bit Nyan Cat, but anything that flies through the rainbow. So a lot of the enemies that like to chase you around the screen a lot. Or any anything that you can get above. Yeah, these enemies will be a good one. If I can fly above them, yeah, the rainbow will do that to them. Which is cool. That's cool. I can dig it. It is a, a fairly limited sort of functionality weapons, not a whole lot of enemies that are going to be especially good to deal with with that, but it's cool, it's cool. I don't like these blue enemies because if you, they do seem to swarm in packs and they can they can overwhelm quite quickly if you get a bunch of them on the screen at once. Green ones are fine because you can ignore a, few, ignore a few of them and you don't have to fight all of them each wave. So, they, they vary in difficulty as well, the different packs, so 
Sometimes, you, sometimes you'll get a lot of green ones and you're like, I'll just fight the ones I want to and progress through at my own rate, and then other times I'll just play like, here's 20 blue enemies that are all going to start shooting hails of bullets at you, and it's going to be a lot more difficult. So, your mileage may vary. Now this one's cool, this one's the overcharge! This one's cool, so when you fire one of these, it does a huge explosion in front of you. There's a bit of a risk-reward thing going on with it, damn it. Uh, which means that in order to get the most firepower out of it, you do have to get up close and personal with the enemies. But, it does do a lot more damage, and I can take out a lot of enemies quite nicely with it, especially these blue ones. I do like it for taking these guys out. Uh, I, I, th I think it's just, maybe it's just when I commentate, I'd be, I normally do a lot better than this. But, yeah, if I can get a few of these guys in a group together. Damn! Would you please go away? This is not going to end too well for me, surely. Oh, the rainbow got a bunch of them, that's cool. You can then so you can sort of strafe them and run the e explosion over them, which is kind of cool. I can fly behind them and drape a rainbow on them. Damn, that didn't work so well. It's a cool ship. I like that one. I'm gonna have one more go with that one, just because I do like this ship, especially with the overcharge. If I can grab the overcharge, I usually do okay with it. I do think um, I do think potentially my having to commentate and do this at the same time, a game that normally would require a little bit of concentration, perhaps. Uh, might be hindering my ability to play, which might make it a little difficult to get to that first boss, which I would like to at least show you a boss. I don't think I'm necessarily going to complete a boss, but I would like to be able to do one, you know? So, let's... Come on, overcharge? No overcharge. I will take the black hole. The black hole is very, very powerful. So, if I get into a bit of trouble, it's a good, it's a good screen clearer. It will just wipe out almost everything on the screen. Gain a little bit double-edged sword, because obviously you can get sucked into your own black hole, and well, that, that's, that's, that's trouble if you do that. Don't really want that to happen. That will kill you, and that is not fun. So let's, uh, let's throw that. I don't really need to do that, but I'd, I'd fancy doing it. Oh, I didn't, I, didn't see, I didn't see them survive the black hole. I wanted the, the power-ups. See, I make, I make a lot of rocky mistakes. I'm not the best. I'm, I'm probably one of the worst people to demonstrate this game, but goddamn, I am enjoying it. So, I'll try and take care of this. I'll fill the awesome meter, so give me an upgrade. Give me an overcharge. That is not an overcharge. I will take the wasps, though. There's a lot of insect stuff going on in this game. I'm not sure what, what, why, where the insect thing comes from. I mean, we've got all these spiders to fight here as well. Spiders are kind of cool as an enemy, because if you hit the, hit, hit the top of them, you can break the string. Uh, the wasps are pretty good at breaking the string, and then the spider will just fall off the bottom of the screen. Which is kind of neat. Okay, we've got these guys who I don't like at all. The overcharge is not too bad at getting rid of those those purple guys. The purple ones have a ridiculous amount of health, and they're pretty powerful as well. So they can just kind of swarm the screen if you don't take care of them really quickly. Spider, the big spiders are pretty powerful as well. I might fire one of those, see if I can... There we go, there's some power-ups. Cool. I just wanted rid of the big red spider, the big red spider. Those webs that it fires just cover the screen. Crazy. These guys, the little spiders aren't so bad. They just, they spray stuff down on the screen, but... The big ones fire such huge shots. Oh, here's another one. Fun times! Well, in five seconds, I can fire a black hole and take care of it that way. See you later! And, oh, it didn't kill it, but it killed its string, which is, I guess, okay. That works for me. That's a cool mechanic with the spider. I do like the mechanic there. I've never taken the armor. That might be a really good armor, but the idea that it's non-regenerative armor seems like you could just waste that really easily, and I probably would. So I'm going to take a Rainbow of Doom. I'm going to deal with these guys. Ah, uh, no, I wanted those upgrades. Give me the upgrades. Probably not worth sacrificing a life over upgrades, but hey-ho, here we go. Alright, there's a bunch of you guys, you're gonna have to go in the black hole. Seriously. I think I might, potentially, if I can st- no, yeah, I'm not- those upgrades are not worth my life. Even though there were three of them. I might potentially be able to make the boss here. Let's see, okay, that worked out okay. Just fly over the top of them, and the rainbow. Rainbow does its thing. Bam. Okay, that's too many enemies. That is just too many enemies. I hadn't actually really tried the rainbow method on these guys before, but it seems to be doing okay. Just fly over all the enemies. And the rainbow 
Okay, there's a lot of enemies that I can't fly over there. An interesting strategy, that one. It's kind of not the worst. Oh, why would I do that? Why would I do that? There we go, 60,000. See, I'm just, you know, I'm not getting anywhere close. Shame I didn't get to any bosses, but, uh, yeah, that's, that's a quick look at a bunch of the new stuff in there. I like the new ships, I'm liking the new ships. There's still some options I do think need adding. I think the controller sensitivity and resolution options are major ones that I need to see. Uh, otherwise, uh, it's not too great. But, I'm liking the new weapons, I'm liking the new enemies, I'm liking, I'm liking all the new stuff. It's looking cool. I am very much looking forward to this game when it is released. Uh, at present, I'm actually not sure when or if there is an estimated aim, a date to aim for for release, but I'm looking forward to it whenever it may be. So obviously, yeah, you can go check out the old version of the game on their website, and that'll be linked in the description below, and you can also sign up for the closed beta, which is basically this version of the game as well, so you can try and get in on this action as well if you want to try that. So as I say, that'll be linked in the description below, so you can go sign up there. Anyway, I've been Maroka. This has been a Rosh Fusion. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.